Darrell Impey being looked after on the left hand side for Israel Premier Tech. He won a stage here last year. And there's Biniam Girmay. Keep your eye on him. He will certainly be having a go at this one today. in the Belgian champions jersey. For DSM, it's 146 you need to keep your eye on. Marius Meyerhofer. It sits just a couple of wheels behind Binyam Girma in the black jersey. And that front few rows, no sign of Caden Groves. Give sign of Peter Sagan. Dimar has been placed up there as well. Juan Garcia Cortina, don't forget about him as we look at Tim Merlier. And Merlier never looked in trouble on the climb. He was always good uh, in a good place, around 20 to 30 position. Um, so he didn't really suffer. And if he didn't really suffer, I think he's just the fastest. Well, we'll find out because we're heading towards the final 10 kilometers now. 11 k's to go. On our way into Notville for the first time in the history of the Tour de Suisse. Never had a stage finish here before. And it's a great chance to say goodbye for local boy, Michi Shep. He had his moment of, moment of fame already for more than 100 k. So he's happy when he crossed the line, I think. He will be delighted. How should a Citroën? Well, his team don't really have one of the fastest sprinters there, but they do have Clément Venturini, who will be trying to get the place best place possible. Been up there in bunch sprints and done well, but would have to have a, a tremendous day if he were to get the better of the likes of Medellin and company. But everything thing can change in the last, last 10k. Yeah, so. it's not always an indicator, <laughs> is it, nowadays? No. Sometimes, I mean, I, I guess, I mean, you'll tell me, and you'll know much better than I do, but I guess that some some riders like to have a teammate behind them just in case sort of sweeping up others prefer to be the last rider it, it's yeah. personal preference that isn't it it is yeah actually a lot of riders do like somebody behind them just somebody who is really good in fighting others um so there's not a big fight uh, for their wheel um or, or to lose their teammates in front of them um but actually i think Normally you're not you're not the the the, the third uh, last one in the in the row. So, like McClay was was still having somebody behind him. So then it looks like he's going to sprint for me. But it's what you're saying. For everybody has their own preferences, so it can be different. Keep our eye on it as we now continue the downhill. 8.5 k's to go. Kilometers ticking away quickly. Sudal quick step. How are they going to play this here as well? Because Medlier is there. If Evnepal gets involved in the lead up, then he's got a fantastic wheel to follow. We've seen him do it before, Evnepal. <laughs> yeah, and it keeps him out of trouble for himself as well. For the GC, he doesn't want to lose any seconds. He won't be the last one in the, uh, in the lead out, but he can be like uh, the beginning of the lead out. Can you imagine that he likes to keep a pace? a particular stage a couple of years ago in the Tour of the Algarve where he did that job third or fourth to last man and really almost put a gap between him and everybody else. Too strong for his team almost on the day. It's crazy when the GC riders do that. We just saw, saw Jurain doing it in the, in the Giro, of course, for, uh, for Cavendish. First position is important as we turn very tightly to the left-hand side. Eight kilometers to go now to the conclusion of the second stage of the Tour de Suisse in Nortville. Finish in the town for the first time in the race's history. It's the first road stage after we had the time trial yesterday that saw Stefan Kung win the stage and take the yellow jersey. Today we've had a crash. We're not quite sure exactly who was still there. We didn't see any lingering shots to see which riders were struggling to get to their feet. We do know, though, that Armand Dumas is here at the front. What for night? Biniam Girmay, Brian Kokal. There's lots of different top riders. Tim Medlier is there wearing his Belgian champions jersey. We've seen Mozzato and McClay. But who will be playing the top tune come the end of the day? 
John Dean Mayo sits in this peloton as well, let's not forget. Peter Sagan has been up there towards the front. There's actually, there are quite uh, a lot of sprinters in this race for the, the ch chances they have. This is the best chance for the sprinters to to get a sprint finish and it looks like they're, they're getting one. But there's actually only one possible uh, other sprint finish this, uh, this eight days. A lot of riders coming here for the difficulty of the days, aren't they? Getting ready for the Tour de France and the national championships before that as well. There was Kim Hyde up going backwards for Ineos Grenadiers, his job done. We move now into the final seven kilometers. The lake again is visible in the distance. The pace is going to continue to pick up now. It is going to be one big, fast, furious finale. And it looks like actually all the turns now make everything, uh, every time the peloton uh, one long line again. Uh, it's difficult for, to position well. But in the last 5k it's really easy. We just have one corner at 5k to go and then it's all the way straight to the finish. Tudor Pro Cycling trying to be up there at the front. Through that traffic island everybody getting round okay but the next turn coming up. Trek Segafredo are there. They have won that position. You can see each time somebody makes a mistake. Look at all the extra effort they have to make Ooh. up on that far side, sprinting around those signs and losing their position. You could end up from almost the front to the back of the peloton in something like that. Yeah, it looks crazy. Also, the guy standing there with the flag uh, at the side of the, of the roundabout. He almost got crushed by, by riders, but um, it all went well. And uh, yeah, it's really hard to stay in position here. But from now on, it's easy. So. Oh, that was Jacopo Mosca doing his bit to keep Matthias Skelmorza nice and safe. Kamp just sits in there as well, getting ready to see what he's got left for that fast kick to the line. And then Kuhn doing his work as well for Dumare. It's also really good to see the guy in the yellow jersey uh, defending, of course, his own jersey by staying in the front, but also helping his sprinter to the line. Riders have seen this before, haven't they? Remember, five k's to go here is what caused the confusion for us when we were coming up to the so kilometer starting to see all sorts of arches and things like that but that was the 5k to go banner <laughs> Arnold Demar is there and sat on his wheel is Peter Sagan so there's Baralli he's going to be trying to get up there for Alpacine de Kern he doesn't sprint so much these days but he has won a grand tour sprint he's got riders around him and on his wheel is Caden Groves there that's the question And Caden Groves does appear. He's been well protected. He's been hidden. So Caden Groves is going to have a go. That's a surprise. Mm, and actually, I think like it's a guy who can also handle a, a, a tough final. So he might have been, been in trouble and has a hard time to come back. But I, I think he can still do a really good sprint. And he's there and he's being positioned now by Sparali. I thought it was strange to see him moving up towards the front again, given the fact we had not seen Groves. Just turned out he'd been fantastically hidden there in the peloton. <laughs> It's a big surprise he's here. But Left where's Wout Van Aert? Oh, yeah, there. He's in the black jersey. Remember, he's in the black jersey today. He's just sat in front of Tim Melier, who's picked his wheel. And again, for Tim Melier, it's a, a different approach to this one. There's no big Sudal quick step lead out train, it looks like, here at the minute. He might have to fend for himself unless Eve Napool can come and make sure he wins that position. Very much in Geraint Thomas style, as you were talking about just a moment ago. Yeah. Yeah, some greatness from uh, GC leaders who are leading out uh, the sprinters. King wants a bit of help here because he wants to set the front as well. So this is Baralli who's looking after Groves. Groves being protected in front and behind. On the right hand side, Ineos Grenadier is looking after their leaders. Also and Peacock DSM is up there. Three kilometers to go now. Brian Kokar, you mentioned there, saying they've got Marius Meidorfer. In the middle with a lot of guys from DSM still around him. I think Jordi Mayus, I didn't really see him in the front yet. Not too many Bora signs of Bora Heinsgrohe jerseys today. So you can see there's a group of riders halfway down. And now Maus, yeah. left hand side, just being moved up. I think that's Michael Hallow who's going to try and move him up and help him out. 
Jonas Koch is in and around there as well. There's a night of eyes on the left-hand side for Ineos. Right inside, it's still Demar who's keeping that place really well, and they've done a great job so far. Just over two kilometers to go now. Hoppersin to Koenig, left hand side with Caden Groves. On the left, a bit further around him, there's the Kulpana team looking after. Arnold Demar, he's wearing 82 in the blue jersey, 21 in the blue jersey is Groves. Groves getting to the stage where he might have to look after another wheel to surf in a moment. Just behind you can see a few riders moving up from Anto Marché. Not too far behind them is Binyam Girmay. Left hand side as we look at it, it's Daniel Os keeping his old mate Peter Sagan nice and safe towards the front two. Now Roman Bardet and company with Marius Meyerhofer at the back of the tray moving up. Alker Samsic through the centre, looking after either McClay or Mozzato. And this now is going to be fast and furious. 1.7 kilometres to go, yeah. And it's looking crazy. You see all the uh, all the trains from different themes, but they have all, all the sprints have like one guy in front of them. Get my data on your screen there. What's being put out just to stay up here. 492 already, and he's in the wheels. Jorgensen moving up, just fighting to try and keep the position there for Movistar. This is so, so difficult. One by AC's. one, they peel off. And there is uh, Roman Bardet helping out in the lead up now. Stefan Kuhn coming up to the final kilometer. And it's anybody sprint this now. Sagan there on the wheel. He's chosen the wheel, in fact, of Meyerhofer. It slows down a little, though, with 900 meters to go. Not everybody taking it up, and teams are holding back, keeping their powder dry for the moment. Arnold Demar and company have lost their position after having done all that work. And now at the front, Sudal quick step with a rider, looking around to see where Tim Medley it is. He's freewheeling at the minute. He's sitting behind. He's in about 10th position, getting up to half a kilometer to go now. It was a slowish approach, but now surely it has to speed up. The finish line is up ahead. Ned Lear and company up there, but away off those at the front at the moment. We go to the front and it looks as though the sprint finally might well be launched. It's Wat van Aert who is launching it. Wat van Aert there on the right hand side in the black. But look at Binyam Germay trying to come around him. Binyam Germay is there trying to hit the front. Germay does hit the front. It's Germay who's back to business. Germay like a rocket to the line. And Binyam Germay with Binny being back. Absolutely <laughs> sensational. And what a sprint from Birmai. <laughs> Where did that came from? He'd kept nice and protected all day long. He's only raced a couple of days since that awful crash in Flanders. He already looked good in Belgium last weekend. He is on fine form here in Switzerland. Biniam Gidemai coming off of the wheel of Wat van Aert, beating van Aert at his own game. And my, oh my, we can get very excited about this man on his debut at the Tour de France in less than 20 days now. Yes, we're going to get a show from him in the Tour as he shows, uh, yeah, he, today he shows how strong he is. And uh, yeah, we can only hope for more in the Tour. Biniam Germay back in business. It's yes, his first win since February. Yeah, he has had such a hard time uh, crashing in the in Flanders, uh, having a concussion, being out for two months, just came back uh, last week, and now already winning his first, uh, well, his, his, first, race first his first World Tour race of the season, his first yeah. race since February. Look at this, the Eritrean supporters <laughs> mobbing their hero. <laughs> Absolutely sensational. And what a celebration he got here. <laughs> well, he can have as many flags as he wants, I think. <laughs> Binyam Germay, though, has a job to do to get to the podium. He, he's used to this. He is an absolute superstar back home. <laughs> it is really cool to see. But I think they all want to protect him because there's all those COVID uh, rules again. Nobody can get yes. close. Uh, <laughs> but they don't listen. They just want to celebrate together. Biniam Gerbay winning the stage, and this is how he did it. Unfortunately, the helicopter panned so far out, I wasn't sure we were going to see it at some stage. <laughs> but somehow, 
here on the right hand side there is Wout van Aert. he goes at 320 meters to go Girmay coming out on the outside and then straight around I mean he made it look easy didn't he yeah but like he just came to Wout van Aert and it looks like he had a second jump he just came to the wheel uh, of van Aert and then uh, yeah the speed went up and he just got over it and looks like Gir the Mare just get close to him but yeah, he was just the fastest. It looks like Demar is there. It may well have been Bittner doing the sprinting for Dersen. To double check that. But certainly good might. Peter Sagan up there as well with a really solid sprint too on the right hand side. That is very encouraging yeah. for him. He gets the better of the likes of Jordi Meus. There were quite a few riders who were not involved in the game after that. Caden Grau grows, must have been boxed it. And, and it well looks like Sagan. Germay has already found his shape and uh, Wout van Aert is just missing out of that top speed, I think. He was so early and he didn't really uh, uh, drop his speed, but he was just not having the, the top, top speed. Germay, Dima, van Aert, Bittner. <laughs> <laughs> what a reaction. <laughs> Off he goes to the podium. It's such a good celebration they, <laughs> they're having here. Well, 11th career win. But of course, wherever he goes, wherever he wins, he is a superhero for those carrying the Eritrean flag. <laughs> they're always well followed wherever you go. Girmay, well, trying his best to get to the podium here. <laughs> but it's proving a more difficult task than winning the stage itself. He's going to need the help of the security at the end. It was already a big fight towards the line, but it's actually an even harder fight towards the podium. Wow. And, well, and I mean... <laughs> So good for him to come back in in this way. Already fourth in cycling in Brussel Cycling Classic, winning the stage here now after two really hard months of uh, rehabilit rehabilitation. It must feel really sweet to win here. Germay Demar van Aert is the podium. Bittner and Sagan. Sagan with the top five that will taste very, very sweet indeed. Meos Garcia, Aramburu, Turnese and Berlins in the top ten. It was a, a funny last kilometre though, looking back at it. It seemed to slow down almost. Nobody really wanting to, to go and have a go. Van Aert maybe seeing that and launching his sprint at just over 300 to go as well. There was maybe a lack of bodies, a lack of men in the train to see if you could have a, a traditional sprint. But then again, how many times have you said it in the last couple of years? Sprinting has changed. It is no longer the uniform procession with the rider after rider peeling off. And the man who negotiated it the best today was Biniam Girmay. Bini is back in Switzerland. And Mike Turner's are there celebrating behind him. And a Marché with a huge win. Stage two of the Tour of Switzerland goes to Binyam Germain. That's his first World Tour stage win since that stage in the Giro. I'm sure he'll be being extra careful with any champagne corks today. Also a winner, of course, before that, this level of Gent Wevelkiem. It's another big race where he's added his name to the Palmares in 2020.